problem. He said, well, they built the A&W over there and they got the deli, Dairy Queen in the corner and it looks like it's too close, we might run into it. He said, can we shorten it up? I said, yeah, make it a three-eighths, a lot of three-eighths track. I said, just, just make the other end like that end and it'll be fine. Okay. And that, <laughs> All right. Well, so that was uh, your involvement in, in building the track. Yep. I'm going to switch directions. I'm going to go to Gary. Uh, I mentioned sulky braces. Uh, to me, you don't seem old enough to know about those. But tell us about sulky braces. Well, of, of course, sulky actually is kind of a, a Americanized uh, Egyptian chariot racing type thing. Actually, it resembled the the chariots that were used. At, at not only just in Egypt, but were also used in, in, uh, in the Roman times. Uh, Roman soldiers had those type of uh, vehicles. But in, when I was, uh, I was joined Earth in 1953, so of late 50s, I can remember my grandfather who farmed with horses just loved sulky and horse poles, and so I'd go with him. And that picture you're seeing there is of 1909, when it was up at the North Fairgrounds, which would be on the Hagedorn Farm, up where the new school is. That's where it was. Mm. Also, the airport was out there at that time. Um, in many cases, uh, horses were kind of becoming the, uh, a lost art, and so I think we had sulky racing here in Greene County until about the early 60s. I can remember the late 50s going with my grandfather. Come. And the thing is, there's two types of carts that they used. There's what they call the jogging cart, which was a real heavy cart, usually made, some cases made of wood, some cases made of, of solid steel. That was their training cart. Then the real race was raced with what they called a bike cart. It's got the little, looks like bicycle wheels on it. Usually those were made with a, an aluminum. Now, today, they're made with a, a carbon steel, titanium type steel. You can lift one of those things almost with one hand. Um, and I can remember going to, uh, there was a few spills we had out here. If you ever see these guys, they, they, they don't like to lock up their wheels, but they do, and you'll flip one of them. And they tried to have it so when the horse hooked to the, to the cart, they had on the back of the horse, they kind of had a saddle strap to come down, and then the cart uh, hooked to those on either side. And they would have it so those would break away from the horse, so it wouldn't throw the horse if the cart would flip. But if you've ever seen any of those carts, what they call the bike cart, there's barely any place for the guy to sit. Now, a guy my size, 250 pounds, there's no way I could probably be on a sofa. First of all, I'd have to have probably a perchin to pull it. But uh, <laughs> these were little standard horses. These were horses that, that high trot, you know. And they didn't gallop, it was just a high trot. Trotters, I think that's what you call them, Denise. They were trotters. How close uh, were you to the horse? Oh, you were just right behind it. I mean, if some guys would actually take and put a, a type of uh, a netting on the tail, because they didn't want to get swished with the tail. That's how close they were. Yeah, you're right up there, right behind it. And you, they'd have their feet up, sometimes just almost sitting on their feet. And of course, Riding, uh, it wasn't extremely fast, but it was still enough that if you took a spill, it probably would hurt. So did you see sulky races here? Yeah, I saw some and sulky races. out here at this? Right out here at the mile track, or a half mile track, yep. And they kept, they had barns down there. I never remembered the barns. Gary and, and uh, Frank, um, Ed were telling, talking about there was some buildings way down there. Often they'd be uh, southeast corner. Uh, where they would keep all these sulky okay, well, Gary, uh, horses. Gary, you talked about those stables and the barns. I just remember being out there when we built the track. And the the wilts. Wilts, and they That's were, where the Wilts kept their horses. And yes. they were pretty big disrepair at that time, and, and then they ended up taking them down because they were becoming a hazard. Okay, but you remember those uh, uh, barns? Do you remember sulky races at all? No, I do not. You're too, too young. I do. <laughs> I got to go when I was about five with my grandpa O'Brien, who loved horses like a lot of old farmers. And I got to go with him by myself. It was in the late 40s. And before we got out here to the racetrack, he said, you want some candy? And I said, sure. You know, I'm five. 
and we stopped at the pool hall and he said just run in there get yourself some lifesavers so I I knew I wasn't supposed to go in there but I did and I got those lifesavers and came out here and saw the trotters and there was a family south of town who raised horses the Wilsons and I can't remember Mr. Wilson. Dwight. Dwight, yes. Dwight Wilson. And he was a little guy, and he had a son named Jack, who was a little guy too. And Grandma used to take me out there to see those horses. I mean, beautiful white fences, mm -hmm. nice house. And they moved to Southern Illinois, I think to by where the Hamiltonian is run, probably in about 1953. So you remember Sulky raising and going to them? I do remember yeah. those, and I remember that the Wilts had their house, their horses out here. Thank you. There was, uh, well, a family from Rippy, Owen and Alice Lape. I don't know if you remember the Lape family. They had some horses they would come and run with. And, uh, gosh, I'm trying to think. Oh, the Winkleman Farms from Oroville. They'd bring some horses down okay. that had sulky uh, ability. Okay, Ed and Frank, do you remember those stables and anything about horses? I just don't know. I just remember the stables being there is all. And like and he said, Mike and Barb Wilt had horses out there. They, the Wilts raced horses even before they came to Jefferson. I think he had a brother up north that was big into it. And, uh, Benny so, Wilt was a contemporary of mine. Uh, sure. And yeah. he, when he was a teenager, he spent a lot of time in those barns oh, shoveling bet. something. I'll bet he did. <laughs> okay, let's talk about... Uh, after the horses uh, became a racetrack for cars, and that was before the JC. Was it before the JCs? Was there a race car races out here? I don't know of any car races before the JCs took it over. I think it was all horses before. Yeah, yeah okay, pretty much. JCs took it over. You guys remember the details about how it came about? Uh, it was a really active JCs club, I know. Mm -hmm. um, have to make a deal with the county or to uh, deal with the supervisors or the uh, fair board fair, fair board and the really jc's was together remember any details about that no. or about the finances or about tickets or anything well there was a lot of a lot of talks went on between the fair board and the jc's and actually the fair board was doing most of the work as far as the costs go too the JCs were providing all the help and what knowledge we had of it, but uh, it, it went over real well with the two of us, I think, you know. We um, I want to show you this newspaper. I'm oh, going to hand it to Frank because it's his picture. Uh, tell us about that picture or what it's about. Well, that's, I was the flagman. Which means you were the guy to start her? Yes. Er, Ernie Sanderson was the announcer. That's him. Okay. And, and there's I, a picture of you in the racing news. Yeah, in the Hawkeye Racing News. And that's the there. inaugural race, right? Yeah, yeah. you're in my pilot. 1971 or yeah. F72? Now when yeah. you say flagman, you're the starter? Yes, I was the starter. And like I said, Ernie Sanderson was the announcer. And I always thought always Harry Shannon was the starter. Well, Harry Shannon, didn't he start it at first and That's, then you yeah, took it over? Yes. Because he wasn't able to really do that. Yeah. Bob, Bob and Harry, you worked together, right? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Crazy. And Ernie would <laughs> stand out on the racetrack there, you know, and he'd always say, you know, watch him, watch him, watch him. <laughs> You yeah. watch the cars, and I'll watch the starter. Mm -hmm. And then he'd run back into the, the pits. You know. I remember Harry Shannon starting out in the middle of the track, the green flag. Yeah. And they'd come around. If they weren't lined up right, he would make them go past. Yeah. They'd come around again, going like hell. He'd wave that green flag and then just run. Back to the pits. We swore he was going to slip on the mud. I think in the my newspaper stuff, I think there's a picture of him doing that. Mm. Probably is. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, then we eventually went to a flag stand, which was um, much, it, much safer. Yeah. And, and uh, You talk about Ernie Sanderson. Here's a photo that Bob has provided me. Here's Bob winning a trophy in 1972, uh, being handed the trophy by Ernie Sanderson. 
why don't you pass that around and see if we can look at it. Because uh, those are two characters in Bob, Ernie uh -huh. and, uh, and uh, Harry both. But you um, had to know Harry. Yeah. Oh, yes, he was different. Okay. <laughs> Frank, any other stories about starting the track in the first races those first years? No, it was a bunch of good JCs that all got together and made things happen. You remember how long it went? How many years? About three, wasn't it? And I'm not for sure. It wasn't. It wasn't too long. No, it wasn't too long. The JCs really. So Ed, Ed, what jobs did you have? Well, mine was more or less called a pit steward, where I was help get the cars lined up in the pit and tell them they're, they're in the next race and they had to line up to go out there and kind of watch that. But we also had uh, a patrol in the pits because back then, you know, a lot of guys. They were pretty wild, drank a lot of beer, and they liked to raise cane. We had uh, Eddie Davis. Eddie Davis. Yes. I remember that. And he was, he was more or less the, the official law out there. If there was any trouble, you got a hold of Eddie, and he got her settled down one way or another. Yeah. So uh, now as far as when we built the track, we did, I think we got the maintainer, though, from the county. The county went along with us and on the, some equipment like that. Um, the packer, the old tire packer that they filled with sand and everything to pack it, that was... We uh, had a water truck. I remember driving yes. that water truck. Was that a county truck? I'm not for sure on the truck who owned that, but um, John Zepp was the main man on the maintainer. Okay, you've got a list of names in your he, hand. He, had a, he ran you? the maintainer out there. Okay. Who and else you got on the list that's notable? Well, not a lot there. I, I just mentioned, you know, we always had a tow truck, at least one out there, and that was Shorty Tassler mainly. And then, of course, the Greene County Ambulance had to be out there for every race. And if they would have to take someone to the hospital or whatever, you had to shut the races down because you didn't have an ambulance, so you had to wait till they got back to... Yeah. They didn't have as much as they have today for ambulance service. And then after J.C.'s, was that when Keith Conroy took it over to run it? As far as I know it was, yeah. 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 That's as I understand. I wasn't here, but I talked to Keith about it. Okay. I'm going to interject on that if I can. Um, yes. Thank you. Pardon me. Don Krager took it over. I'm not sure that was right That's, after the chase. That was that you look a lot like Dave Ryan. <laughs> could be. You could oh be. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I forgot about Don Kreider. Yeah. And, and, and I that was his own maintainer. But he didn't have it very long either, did he? I'd probably say three, four years or something. Yeah, but that long? Okay. And uh, that was when Ron Betterton was a county engineer and he did a lot of things that probably oh. couldn't have got done without so him. What, well, more yeah. can, what more history can you tell us? Well, I wasn't thinking about that again. <laughs> no, Cryer had it, and, and uh, I don't know, the George Barton, did he do it one year? Okay. I'm going to go to Gary. Uh, he may have came up here George once, but Barton I don't remember him for, being involved so, in it uh, no, at all. He may have just done like the well, Cryer or something. Cryer run Webster City, wasn't it? Pardon? Wasn't Cryer yeah. the one that run? Yeah. Oh, well, I, I got, got his picture in there. Yeah. Hey, let me go to Gary. Uh, you told me you started real young out here. Tell me about that. Well, when the JCs were building the track, my dad was involved in it. And well, I spent a lot of time out here running a packer around the track. How old were you? I, I think I was only around 14, 15 years old. I wasn't very old. And I got a lot tired running that packer around the track. <laughs> then we took some trees out and stuff over there, helped tear down the stables, a lot uh -huh. of different things there. What that? Here's, this one? Uh, this here's one? a picture of the old is in there? harness track, probably. Mm -hmm. You want us to go ahead and, and these are from here. the, 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 uh, the fairboard? Yeah. yeah, these were taken uh, in the 60s. Not a whole lot. It's a little thinner. Now, your dad, Dale, was on the fairboard. Richard. Dick. Dick, 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 Dick I mean. Dick. Yeah. Dick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was on the fairboard, and he was kind of negotiating yes. with you guys to get, oh, it, yeah. to get it going. Because... It was just sitting out there. It wasn't making any money or anything for anybody. Right. 
so they went to work and and tried to get and that was get something going. Nolan and Hapspringer and Andy Foster and your dad. And I think there was Hopper on it too. Jack, my Jack. uncle. Jack was on the yep. okay. Yeah. Yep. He was secretary and of the fair board. For many uh, years. Rainey. Okay, you got some Warren. more pictures. Yep. Warren Rainey. Warren Rainey. Was on it. Well, it okay, but took a lot of different organizations to yeah. get it up and running and, and oh, like say the county provided a lot of stuff. There was a lot of dirt moved. Yes. Why did you decide to do that? Why did the JCs decide that it would be a good idea? Just a money raiser. I recall somebody loved yeah. yeah. somebody loves stock car stock car racing. But it was there was a lot of people around that wanted yeah. to race. It was pretty popular and it, when it, it started. Wasn't, it wasn't a real expensive sport to get into in the yeah. beginning. But yeah. Yeah. that changed, of course, over well, um, time. Then I, well, Gary, you raced too, didn't you? Better. I raced a street yeah. stock, which was just a stock car with a yes. roll cage in it. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. I remember rolling it off a of turn three a couple of times. We yeah. didn't have a seat. No yeah. seat, folks. <laughs> no, I was talking about, talking about racetrack. I want well, to talk about turn three. Huh? I want to talk about turn three. <laughs> that was kind of a bad corner, wasn't that it? That caused more problems. <laughs> it had a soft spot. Yeah. And it would be dusty when it was dry, and muddier in hell when it was wet. And I had to change my driving style. I had to go clear up the, the top to get it into one so I could come down along the bottom. At three. Yeah. And Randall Money, he didn't give a thing. <laughs> <laughs> we came just... down together and he hit that spot. Boy, I'll tell you. Just like that, we would clear off at of the end, both of them wide open, busted my steering box. Yeah. He managed to finish. Tell me about mud. There's a mud hole out there still today, right? Well, that's what I hear. And and that's what you talk about, that uh, always a mud hole, right? Well, what happens when you drive a car over, it brings the water up. Webster City had a bad spot about that big around. People would drive through it and upset because it'd be perfectly smooth and by the time the race is over with, it'd be about that deep. Okay. And just pound it. Okay, I want to talk to you about mud though. You were, I think Keith Conroy talked to me about it, about the mud and the driver and the visors and trying to see. Tell us about that experience. Well, I never had that much problem with the mud. I, I don't know why. I think the way my car was built, it knocked the mud off before it got to me. But some of them had real problems. And then you had pull-out visor, which I never had. I mean, I, I just dress like I am right now. But if you had visor, you had to keep wiping it off, right? Yeah, or else they had tear-offs. And then they had tear-offs or strips. Do yeah. you guys remember that, Ed? I don't think too many of them had tear-offs no. when they first started out no. here. That, that, that came into existence a little later and being well, I think used. Keith told me that you had strips and you could tear off one yeah. at a time, but Sometimes you get a hold of it, tear off the whole work. <laughs> then you're in trouble. You got no shield or visor. You know, Another bad spot on the track was coming out of four. There was a drain across there. And uh, what would happen, you'd hit that if you had your power on. Well, you get spring wrap up. I don't know if you know what that means or not. But your leaf springs would up like that, and then it'd release, and then bing, 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 and get washboard. And I learned to, just as soon as I got there, to back off an instant and then hit it. So I didn't have power on going across it. But these guys would never learn that. They'd hit that, <laughs> bing, 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 down the track. And by the time the day was over with, you had yeah. work boards about that deep all the way across there. And yeah, I don't know what the hell course, that drain was. Of course, when this track was first started, there wasn't any lights out there. Yeah. See, so it was day racing, and it was on a Sunday afternoon. Yep. I mean, what else did you have available? You know, the race in the daytime outside of Sunday, really. Yeah. So it was Sunday afternoon, and so, you, you know, it was always plenty warm and dry. And so uh, we would put calcium chloride on the track, and that's when they'd use the maintainer and kind of scarify that in. So that calcium chloride helped draw the moisture back up, because it got pretty dry and dirty during the in the afternoon like that so yeah that thing you're talking about is that what you call the wheel hop yeah washboard sort of thing 
Okay, you also told me something about uh, wide caps and weight jack. Oh yeah. Tell us what those are. Well, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. I mean, we somebody do something that seemed to work, we'd all copy it. Sure. Finally, I got a hold of a magazine. I don't know where I got it. Told you how to build it up. So I followed the instructions. It said the big thing is a roll bar in the front, at least one inch in diameter. I got that out of an Ozenville, the junkyard. And uh, the other thing is, it said that you needed to eliminate the wheel hop, you need the short spring in front. Your spring needed to be short in the front, long in the back. So the front actually just was a guide more than anything else. And so I did that. And also, uh, there was a problem about the camber. On a Ford, the upper control arm is in a slide. And so you can only take it so far and you can't get it back far enough to get a reverse camber. On a Chevy, they had a plate. They'd put the upper control arm on the back side and wash it back. So it told you what to do about it, so I followed that. I took out the spring, kept it on the same height, I sawed it off, and then I clamped it together until I had two degrees negative camper. And then with the roll bar in front, that made it run flat. And uh, I'll tell you what, you can't believe the difference. And I'll tell you something crazy. Chevy's never had front bars on them. So guess what? Today they still don't allow them in boot. Because if Chevy didn't do it, then you don't want it. <laughs> in fact, I caught more hell about that. I'd go to Webster City and they'd form a protest. He's doing something illegal. So one night, I never will forget, <clears throat> I stand there and these two guys came up. The guy says, I don't know what the hell he's doing, but Ford can't beat a Chevy, he's illegal. So they looked it all over. Couldn't find anything wrong. He said, I don't know what the hell he's doing. So guess what? They, uh, they said, I must have too wide a tire. I forgot to mention, I found a flat tire, F-L-A-T-T, -T, in Des Moines that made drag slicks. I bought them for 12 bucks a piece. And that's all I paid for them. They were on cap. So they went around, they looked all the time, these are just car, car tires. Yeah, the caps on. <laughs> but anyway, they filed a complaint. So the one picture there, you see me leaned around sideways with no number on. That was the night that they processed. And what they did, they didn't check the tire width, they checked the imprint. The imprint was one sixteenth of an inch too wide. Wow. And they said, this gotta be fixed. I looked down at Mac T, they took a 16th off of it. <laughs> Give me the bill. But uh, it was funny because I had nothing special on it. It was all used to, uh, it's a combination. And if I hadn't read this book, I'd have never known what the hell to do. And you tell about reading that book and doing those things. If I understand, you worked on your car basically all by yourself. Yeah. You worked full time. Yeah. Evenings and weekends, you worked on your car. And Webster City was a problem. I had no trailer. I had no pickup. I had the DX station loan me his pickup. And I got the trailer off of, uh, oh, who the hell was it? I used to race against it. Anyway, I'd borrow his trailer. i get off work. I had to get the pickup. I had to get the trailer, load it up, go to Webster City, come back, and then unload. Twice I did it all by myself. That's how bad I, I wanted to win. Tell me about claim claim races. You talked to me about claim races. Well, Tell I, us about that. I was never involved in a claim race. But they did that to try to keep the cost down. So what would happen, I think, as I remember, they were given, what, $1,200 for an engine? Three. Three hundred. Yeah, on the claim days, yeah, three and a quarter. Yeah, you had to. 25 to the record, okay. Yeah. If you were in the first two or three and somebody wanted your engine, you had to sell it. You were forced to sell your engine if somebody wanted it. Yeah. Very, very, 
very few engines had only three hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Well, I so, gave one hundred and thirty dollars for my first. One. So if you're hundred twenty for the second one. If you're in the top five in the race, uh, and somebody else is like six or down, they can come and say, "I want your motor." Yep. Three hundred bucks, you have to sell it. And you had to pull it right then. Yeah, right. But I never raced like that. No, well, we didn't do that here at Green Valley. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was in the Conroy days when I was right. yeah. Later on. Um, By the way, Keith is not in my list of drivers because he hadn't driven yet. I don't know if you know. Oh, okay. I didn't oh. notice that. He should be, huh? No. No. He didn't yeah. race the first two years. Oh, no. okay. Not, yeah, not at first. He didn't no. No. Yeah. No, that's everybody I could find out of the paper. Okay. You got a list? Did we pass this around the list of drivers? If you all want to take a look? Yeah. A lot of those are from out of town, too. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Right the mm -hmm. There's something called jalopy races. Gary, you remember that? Does that ring a bell with you? No, I doesn't. Yeah. How about thunder cars? Thunder cars. That was the street stop. Tell us about thunder cars. They were basically just a car off the street. You put a roll cage in them. Can do any modifications to the steering or anything, and had to be smaller than a 350 cubic inch motor. And you raced it; they weren't that stable on the track. And <laughs> that's about all I can. Do. I thought Bob talked to me about Omnis and uh, another little car. Uh, I never raced those. I raced a the thunder cars that were out here when Keith had track. They were like gremlins. Gremlins, omnis. And yeah, like that. Yeah. A lot of the guys started with those. And pacers, we had a pacer. Yeah, kind of fun when he rolled. Little cars, yeah. so, not yeah. modified. So, not much to them, no. Yeah. Uh, just no, roll like, cages. And yep, just roll yeah. cage. And I'm sure like anything, that's how they all get expensive. Some eventually yeah. someone did So how long, goes, how long did those last? Or how many years did they run? Uh, thunder cars were... Probably most of the time when Keith was running. Uh, it's a funny name for little tiny cars. Yeah. Like thunder cars. Now they call them tuner cars. They got to run it now at some of the tracks again. They're called tuner cars, but now they cost about three thousand dollars for one. So did we have a, a, like mod a, a modified go kart or super go kart sort of things? They out had there? mini sprints out here. Mini sprints. That's yep. right. They did have mini sprints for a while. I can remember right here was this car. Car. Once. Oh, did you? What year was this list but from? It's been back in the early 60s. I'm going to say this would be that time that we turned on. Did you run the whole track, Roger? This would have been or 71 no? and 2. 71, 72. They just made a smaller yeah. track out That's there. Probably probably right. That's everybody out of the paper. Yeah. I took the paper and went through and wrote all the names down. That's probably. No, there were other people that may have raised, yeah. but they never showed up in the paper. Something called a reverse start. Anybody know what that means? Oh, you yeah. just ran around backwards. What do you mean? Fast cars to the back. Yeah. That's the way I backwards? grew up. No, no. <laughs> no. They never did it out here. No. Well, went, the there were some times that they would reverse the track where you went around the track backwards. Okay. Forward. I mean, you drove forward, but okay. you went around at the opposite well, why, direction. Why would they do that? I don't know. It's just something to people they screw the, people up. Throw the drivers off? Yeah. I'll tell you the big fans. difference between here and Indiana where I raced. In Indiana, everything was reverse start. So the fastest cars to the back. And so there was 24 cars, 25 laps for the feature. And I was usually on the tail. And so I had... Did you run time trials then? To, oh, yeah. For the laps. And they only allowed a half a second faster when you was running. So you couldn't cheat. And... So, well, and then Webster City, they drew up there. And I never got to draw. They only drew for you. No. One time, I was ahead of the last two rows. I was always on the last two rows. So I had to pass all the cars to win. But in Indiana, uh, I figured it out. I, I had to pass 35 cars one night. Wow. To win the heat, the sixth fastest, second in the feature. I had to pass 35 cars. And that's the way I like it. I wish 
But in Webster City, I always run on the tail. Oh, I just luck and I always drew on the back. Did you ever go under them or over them there, Bob? <laughs> oh, I've done that. <laughs> in fact, I got a picture of one in there. Tell us about the guy that hit you in the uh, trashed your car in the rear end. Oh, boy, I got a picture of that. <laughs> the guy at Webster didn't know what the hell he was doing. He'd never raced before, I don't think. He threw the red flag out. He didn't know what it meant. So here he's coming way over here, and I'm stopped, and here he comes. Wide open, runs right in the back of me. I used to hold back end up. I got pictures of it. Oh, that. And uh, I mean, it was a mess. So I had to find another car, cut the back end off of it, and cut it off of my car, fix it up, put that new back end on, and I raced the next Friday night. I lost 14 pounds that <laughs> wow. getting ready, but I won. Wow. <laughs> uh. So you mentioned something to me about called a nailhead Buick. Does that mean anything to you? Nailhead Buick? I raced a four-door Buick with a stick at it. That what year Buick? 63. 63 Buick? Was it a nailhead? Pardon? Was it a nailhead? I it? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, nailhead Buicks, the block was 90 degrees, just like no, no. V8. But the head stood straight up and down. <laughs> Uh, and how in the hell they run as fast as they do, I don't know, because they couldn't put big valves in them. Yeah. But those suckers would just run like hell. Ooh. No, it wasn't a nail head. In fact, uh, they did, one guy there, he just pulled them out of the junkyard, run them to the blue and went and got another. Pretty <laughs> nice. He, he could run with it. Yeah, he could run. He's on the list. Well, the view you had then was like a, was like a monster. Yeah, no, it wasn't real big, but it, it was a, it was pretty good sized. I only raced it a few times, and then I sold it to Kurt Flack. Oh. It, he raced out here then, with it, and then he went bigger. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, Ed, uh, Frank, anything else you can remember about the JC track and JC uh -huh. racing, or even after that? Were you involved after the JC? Not with the track, no. I wasn't. No, because, like I said, that Kreider, Kreider, I can't even how to pronounce his name, he wasn't from around here, and I didn't get involved there. I don't think hardly anyone from Jefferson did, really, that I recall. Okay, Frank? No, that's... Okay, after, after he had it, uh, how long did, and then Keith Conroy had it. Right. And how long did that last? And when did well, it? Two years. Okay. I think it was '74. Lawton came in, and there was a race over in uh, Hawkeye Corn Husker Challenge over in Sunset. And when all the cars came back, Lawton put on a show out here for the late models. And then I think it was in. 81 or 82, Lawton had it again, and he's the one that did the banking, if you want to call it severe banking, over in turn one and two. And he had it for just just those races. Then Keith came in in 83. Okay. And when did it finally close and stop being used for 90, well, Lawton got it again, and I can't really tell you. I'd say about 90. 495. I'd say 94, 95. Yeah. And he he built the track for to be the same length and just a spitting image of boom, but it wasn't. I mean, the rear end gear was one gear off, so the boom guys didn't come over here because they'd have to change change the rear end gear, and then that kind of car count went down. Hey, tell me what the reason would be for that. Why would they have to change? Somebody made a few uh, mistakes on the dimensions. But what difference does that make to your rear end? I don't understand. A boom, you run a 583 gear, final ratio. Okay. Or 567, I'm sorry. 
here in Jefferson, you'd probably have to run a 583. And you'd have to go in there and take the nine inch forward, get it underneath it, drop the drive shaft, unbuckle the third member, and bring it out. Those things aren't the lights. <laughs> and you get kind of tired of doing that time after time because they weigh 100 pounds. Yeah, and when you're tired from the Saturday night of racing and you've got to do it Sunday and get over here early, yeah, right. you just it got to be where the guys were, well, it's not worth it and the track's not the same. And sure. Yeah, well, what difference does it make in terms of racing? I do that. Well, you motor. With the lower you. gear, five, five, six to seven, you got a higher uh, top end. The 83 is doesn't have as much top end, but it's got more coming off the corner. Oh, so you go faster? Off the corner. Yeah, okay. If the car's set up right, the 67 will go around. Okay. Every, <clears throat> every engine's got a range you need to be in. And if you're not in that range, yep. For example, the lowest I wanted to get mine was 2,800, but I wanted to come out of the turn at 3,200. Yeah. And uh, with my big engine, that was plenty. Now the Chevys, they had to come out faster than that. You see, they allowed engines up to 1,962. So you had 406 Fords and 409 Chevys but you had 350 Chevy. These Chevy's guys were convinced that their 350s will run with anything. And they would not change. I mean, they'd bitch about it. I'd say, look, you got a 421 Pontiac, for God's sake. Well, it's not a Chevy. But what about Nail Hood Beauty? Not a Chevy. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. They had more options than anybody. And I was about the only Ford running. Yes, yeah, yeah. And so it was a, it was foolish. You agree with what he said? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he had more experience at it than I did. Well, Keith was pretty good with the Ford, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah Keith, he was. Keith yeah. did real good. He's yeah. a, he was a hell of a driver. He only had one problem. Up at Webster, I was his pit man. And when he'd go into one, he would come in, he said, the front end's pushing. I said, no, it's not. I said, you're not back at all quick enough. <laughs> oh, God damn it, I want to stay on it. I said, Keith, you got to set it up going in. But he just, but he was a hell of a driver. Yeah. Right? Well, it's too bad he couldn't be here today. Right? He's driving slow today. He's driving a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> that Lottie Lawton you were talking about, he was born and raised in Jefferson. He, yeah, he, south of town. He grew up here in Jefferson. Yeah, and, and family farm. Yeah. I got a picture of Keith and his car in there, in my book. Because I, after I quit, I was his pit man. I was front end man. There you go. Okay, anything else? On to, on there wasn't to, anything on mechanics, but didn't Keith kind of, because of you, decide to run Fords because it would be harder to claim the Fords and nobody wanted the Ford? Oh, well, I, I think so. Yeah, I thought that was kind of his part idea of it, yeah. yours too. Maybe. I got one thing to say. Most of you don't know, I was laying in the hospital when I was, won the championship. <laughs> Is that right? I was working on my car, it fell on me. It broke, my, I cracked my pelvic in five places. I was in the hospital, so I'm laying up there after the race is over. And here come the JCs with the check. They said, we decided to give you a check rather than the trophy. <laughs> so I think everybody should know that. But tell us what led up to that, how you got, how you got hurt. Well, it was stupid. I, uh, the rod bearings that went, and I didn't have any oil pressure. Well, rod bearings don't cost much, they're not hard to put in. So we went out here to a farmer's place, back to back wheels into a ditch, put the front end up on pilaster blocks, and thought it was perfectly safe. I had three throws done. I was working on the fourth throw, and I noticed the transmission bolt was loose. So I tightened it up. When I tightened it up, I must have bumped it in gear. So 
So I grabbed over the flywheel, pulled on the flywheel, there she went. And I'd always told myself, don't lay on your back if a car falls on you. And I'd been better off if I had it. And, but I flipped, and when I flipped, the cross member on 56 